cyberspace as envisaged by H.G. Wells and the early developers of the internet has become a highly contested space. And whether we will achieve this dream of cyberspace as a planetary library that enables the free flow of information or whether we will allow it to be destroyed through censorship, surveillance and militarization, only the future will tell. But to a large degree, the outcome of this question will be determined by us as the average citizen and internet user. We cannot afford to simply take cyberspace for granted. Instead, what is required of us at the most fundamental level is a change in attitude towards the technologies we use. And to bring about this change in attitude, what is required of us is the need for all of us to become hackers. Now please, don't take this the wrong way. Hacking today has become a term that is virtually synonymous with breaking the law, with doing something illegal. That's not how I'm using this word here. Rather, I'm using it in its etymologically original sense. And originally, hacking had a connotation of experimentation, of developing an intellectual curiosity about technology. It's about actively encouraging a new form of digital stewardship, which Ron Diebert argues should encourage us to question the technological world we have become immersed in. We should not only question authority, which is a, a common phrase used all the time within uh, higher education circles, uh, but also question technological authority, question the systems that surround us, the infrastructure upon which we depend. Where does that information go? Who has access to it? Under what conditions? What's happening to the data that I give away, that I emit uh, as, as, as each second goes by and I'm going about my daily life? Where does it go? With whom is it entrusted? And what are they doing with it? That is an act of digital stewardship today that I think we need to encourage among all people. And the hacker ethic, to me, uh, gets at that notion in, in the most uh, appealing way. Becoming hackers, therefore, means for us to stop taking technology at face value, as something magic. Instead, we need to unwrap it, open it up. We need to get into the habit of understanding how technology works beneath the surface. With information technology increasingly becoming the intermediary of our lives, of how we obtain information, knowledge and understanding, we need to think about what's happening beneath the surface of the screens in front of us. Ask yourself what's happening to the email you send. Don't just skip over the end user license agreement, but read it in detail. Ask where your information is going and who it is shared with. Don't just surf the internet, but dive deep into the oceans of the technology you use. Because this is where power and politics are exercised, where the contestation over key questions of freedom, human rights and violent conflict are taking place.